Hello everybody and welcome back. This is part two in a series that will teach you how to move data or display data rather in a web page that is pulled from a Google Sheet via the Google Sheets API. So in the first lesson what we did was we created a, an API key in a client ID and then we captured our Google Sheet ID here as well and we saved that. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and, you know, we have it saved off to the side. Um, go ahead and go to the library again, and if you search for Sheets, you'll find a lot of use for this library here. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll find Tutorials and Documentation. So go ahead and click on that link, and then explore the API. Alright, so if you go to Reference here, you'll find a lot of the references for the available methods. And the one that we're going to be looking at is Spreadsheet.Values. Dot get and that's the same thing that we tested in the previous but now we're actually going to use it in code so if you scroll down here you'll find that there is a lot of code here that we're just going to copy over and then once we copy this over we'll briefly run through some of it and make some modifications so we'll paste here and then up at the top just running through this really quick the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and under the make api function or make api call function we want to put our spreadsheet ID here. So under spreadsheet ID, go ahead and paste. And then the second thing you want to do is get your range. And if you recall, we just did sheet one in the last lesson. So we'll do that here as well. We're going to comment this out because there's also a default render option. And same thing with the date time. You can read through those comments and it'll explain a little bit why that's okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is look here, console.log. This is where it actually displays the information that is pulled from the sheet on the site. So we're going to leave that alone for now, uh, but we will end up making some additions to it later displayed on the screen. So the API key here, if I copy this API key and I put it in the init client function, and then the client ID, I'm going to go ahead and copy that as well, and then put that here. Now, the only thing left to make this work is to define the scope. So if you recall in the last lesson, we defined the scope in the little pop-up that came up where we had to actually deselect everything else. We only want read-only because all we're doing is reading data right now. So I put that in there, and then at the bottom I've got these two buttons that are going to allow me to sign in and sign out. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and move that over to my live server. So now, here we are. If I refresh the screen, you've got a sign in and sign out button. If I click sign in, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to ask for authorization. Yes. And then once that's done, you can see down at the bottom here that I'm going to expand this. You've got your JSON, you've got your array. So date, name, phone, that's pulled directly from the page, or from the sheet. So that's step one. All right, so now that it's working, the next thing we're going to do is customize this just a little bit. So I've already got the code here to save some time, but all I'm doing is I'm going to add a couple of lines. The first thing I'm going to do is underneath the console.log is I'm going to do populate sheet. And that's where I'm calling a function that I've created, a custom function, and I'm going to send it the response.result as a variable. So here is the uh, implementation of that function here, uh, populate sheet, sending in the result. And it's just an array, I'm sorry, uh, two for loops. And all I'm doing is taking the result values and I'm putting them into the sheet. Well, we have to create the sheet too, right? So if you go down a little bit farther below the sign in and sign out button, I've created this here. And this is just me creating in another for loop, within a for loop, a, a table. So pay attention to how I've got these title here as far as the name and ID. I've got row and column. That means that as this goes through, it'll know where to put all the information. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this over to my main one. But you'll want to make those three additions. Once those are done, that's literally all that's changed. We can move this over to the live environment. Once that's moved over, let's go ahead and refresh the screen one more time. And you can see that all of my data populated right here. So this is the same data that was in this sheet over here. And then I just pulled it here. So just for the sake of things, I'll say hello. That's been updated and saved over here. If I refresh the screen, you can see I've got hello right here. So that's as far as we're going to go with this tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, we'll do a little bit more. Uh, but this literally is how simple it is. Uh, all right. Thanks. Bye.